have eternal life. No one else can bless you with this great blessing of salvation. You listen to Acts 4, verse 11 and 12. In reference to Jesus Christ, the Apostle Peter says, This is the stone, Christ the stone, that was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given under heaven among men, whereby we must be saved. No other name can you invoke before God's throne of grace and get God's attention when it comes to salvation or any other thing. God listens when people come before him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in his name only. You can go to the throne of God in the name of Peter, in the name of Mary, in the name of Andrew, in the name of Floyd Hines, in the name of Ch uh, Curtis Chris, in the name of Bo Hines, in the name of Billy Graham, and you will never get the attention of God. But you can go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and say simply, Dear God, I am trusting in Jesus Christ. I come to you through his name and in his name, begging you for, for forgiveness of sin and salvation for my soul, because I know that I've sinned against you, and I guarantee you, you will get an audience with God when you go in his name. But if you go in the name of any other, you'll come away empty-handed. Now, the next thing I want you to know is the attention this scripture demands. <laughs> he says, Today, if you will hear his voice. Now, that's the attention that men need to give. Is attention that will cause you to hear it. Let it sink down. Let it register on your mind and on your heart. Not just hear it and let it go in this ear and as it went out that ear. But hear it so that it sticks with you. Hear it so as to understand it. People hear the word of God. They walk out that door and they don't know the first thing that the preacher talked about or what the words say. When I was at Rondo, Arkansas, I was standing on the edge of a turn row talking to one of the men of the church who owned land there and farmed it. He had a bunch of people out in the field working, both black and white. But one of the black women was talking about the good sermon their pastor preached yesterday. This was on Monday. And yesterday, he really preached a good sermon. So Brother Michonne turned around, and he said, Well, Hattie, what did he preach about? She said, I don't know what he preached about, but it sure had a good tone to it. Now, what good is it? If it just sounds good, or if the voice sounds good, if it doesn't register, and you don't know what he's saying. Hear his voice so that it will stick with you. Hear his voice so that you understand what is being said. In Acts the 8th chapter, verses 30 through 35, we have a case of a man who was reading the word of God. <clears throat> and he didn't understand the thing he was reading. The eunuch, Philip was instructed to go and join himself to that chariot that the eunuch was in. He was a man of high authority, highly educated, reading the word of God, <coughs> but not understanding what he read.
Philip went under the direction of the Holy Spirit and looked up at the man and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? He said, How can I except some man guide me? Then he desired Philip to come up and sit with him. Bible tells us he is reading from Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, and begun at verse 7. The eunuch said, Of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? Then the scripture tells us Philip opened the Bible at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. You follow on down through the remainder of that chapter, you'll hear where the man of God says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip says, if you believe with all your heart, you may. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then he commanded the chariot to stand still. They went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. Philip baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. He finally understood the word of God when he gave it the right of teaching. And God sent a man there to make sure that he knew what was being said. This sheep that was led to the slaughter was Jesus, Philip said. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All you have to do, I can just hear Philip saying, all you have to do is to believe that. And to believe that he went to this slaughterhouse for you, the slaughterhouse of the cross. That he shed his precious blood to cover your sins. Yes, he is the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. Do you believe it? And the eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So hear it. So us to believe it. There are so many things in this book that I don't understand thoroughly. Some things I don't understand the first thing about. But I guarantee you, there's not one word in this book that I don't believe, whether I understand it or not. There is something that every one can understand. And that is that God has man condemned from the book of Genesis through the book of Revelation until he turns to Christ. Men can understand that. If they read it, hear it, and believe it. But then, not just hear it to understand it, but hear it to place all of your faith in and believe that this is God's word. It is not man's word. I've heard people say, oh, the Bible, men wrote it. They did not. Men pinned it down. Men who were inspired of God to write. It is God's word. The Bible declares him to be the author of it. Believe it. Hear it and believe it. No matter if it does condemn, believe it. At the same time that it condemns, it offers a way out of sin. Believe it. In Mark the 16th chapter, verses 15 and 16. This is Mark's version of what we call the Great Commission. Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. There is the important part about believing it. You can believe it and be saved. You can disbelieve it and be damned. I know church Christ play on that verse of Scripture a whole lot. The 
that's all they do is play with it. Jesus said, and this is what they say, he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Well, now I could believe that would be true, that you'd have to be baptized in order to be saved if that was the end of the verse. But it isn't. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. If it would take baptism to save one, he would also use the word baptism after the word believe again. When he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not and is not baptized shall be damned. But he didn't. He just simply said, he that believeth not shall be damned. Takes faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his word. But it takes no faith to be baptized. So hear it. That's what he's calling your attention to. Today if you hear his voice. You haven't heard it if you walk out and forget what was said. Hasn't made any impression on you whatsoever if you walk out and you don't remember what the preacher preached about or even the text that was read. You haven't heard it. You haven't let it register on your heart. You haven't let the Holy Spirit in his great power Accompany that message to your heart where it will make such an impression. You cannot forget it. Now, number three, I want you to see the appointed time that he gives for hearing Christ's voice. It's today. He said, today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. <coughs> the time for hearing Christ's voice is short a day. How much shorter can it get than that? And that's not guaranteeing us another minute or another second of life. But what he is really saying is, well, you have the opportunity today while it is being preached to you, while the Holy Spirit is impressing you with it, then harden not your heart right now while he's speaking to you. That's today. It's short. Second Corinthians 6, verses 1 and 2. The Apostle Paul says, We beseech you therefore, brethren, that we are workers together with God. And he says that God saith, I have heard thee in a time appointed, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee, or strengthened thee. Behold, today, now is the accepted time. Behold, today, now is the day of salvation. Right now is when God wants you to hear the voice of His Son. Right now is when God wants to bestow salvation on you today. Not tomorrow because there may not be a tomorrow. You listen to Matthew 17 and 5. Going back up now and hearing the voice of the Son of God and doing it now. This tells us in the 17th chapter of Matthew about the, cruci or the transfiguration of Jesus. And he took up on the mountain with him these three disciples and our apostles. And while they were there, Moses and Elias appeared with Jesus. 